When's the last time you felt overwhelmed? As a time management coach, I talk a lot about overwhelm. It's something we all experience, no matter what job or what season of life we find ourselves in. It can happen whenever, wherever. Some people are really good at managing this kind of stress and, well, others, maybe not so much, like me. Just a few months ago in December of 2022, I was in that exact spot, totally overwhelmed. I had just launched a second business with my husband called Studio Pizza Productions, offering podcast and video editing services to coaches and creative entrepreneurs. Plus I was serving my own one-on-one -on -one time management coaching clients, leading my group coaching program and showing up for the members of the It's About Time Academy. All the while I was still recording podcast episodes for my podcast, It's About Time, and I was filming YouTube videos while working my way through the latest round of edits for my book, Time Management Essentials. Not to mention it was December, one of the busiest months of the year with parties and events and travel, buying gifts, wrapping gifts, baking cookies, pictures with Santa, festivities galore. It was a lot a whole lot happening at once. And even though I was still getting stuff done, I constantly felt like I was behind or that I was dropping a ball or forgetting to do something important. It felt like things were falling through the cracks and it definitely wasn't how I envisioned my holiday season feeling. I'm sure you can relate, but what I've learned over the years about overwhelm is this, smaller steps are better than giant leaps. I know this can sound a little counterintuitive because when you're overwhelmed, you just wanna get as much done as quickly as possible so you can stop feeling overwhelmed. But in today's video, I wanna show you how to take a step back and focus on getting just one step closer to less overwhelm, one step closer to a more manageable schedule or lighter workload. So in this video, I'll cover two different types of overwhelm and how to know which one you're feeling. We'll talk about why taking smaller steps pays off in the long run. And finally, we'll look at ways to address those obstacles and roadblocks before they pop up. But before we dive in, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let me know that you are serious about beating overwhelm. Okay, so turns out there are two different types of overwhelm, task-based overwhelm and progress-based overwhelm. Maybe you're overwhelmed with your to-do list, or maybe you're feeling overwhelmed from everything that's not being done, from the progress that's not being made. The first type of overwhelm, task-based overwhelm is something that I talk about a lot and it has to do with the overwhelm that can happen because of your to-do list. When we have too much to do in a day and we just can't get it all done, that's task-based overwhelm. But the second type of overwhelm, progress-based overwhelm, that's what happens when we feel pressured to make progress that counts or to take a giant leap, make extreme changes, or be an overnight success. It mainly comes from the pressure to perform, whether that pressure comes from you or from an outside source, like your boss or your parents or society in general. Whenever you feel behind in your career or your life, or like you're in last place of some non-existent race, progress overwhelm is what you're feeling. And this isn't just a feeling that you can have with work or one of those big life goals. It can apply to building habits, improving your time management, taking care of your health, improving your finances, growing professionally, really anything. For example, let's say that you want to stop working on weekends because it's something maybe you've been doing a little too much lately. And let's say that you've been working weekends because you have so much work to do after all of the meetings that you have during your actual work days. Too many meetings and not enough time to get work done has been a constant problem for you and you're ready to make a change. But rather than suddenly expecting yourself to magically get everything done during your fragmented and limited time between all of the meetings in your work week, because that's probably not possible or else you'd already be doing it, let's think about how you can get just one step closer 
to your work-free weekends. Maybe you change your meeting availability. Instead of having your calendar wide open for meetings all five days of the week, cut it back to just three to get some of that deep work time back. Maybe you could block off two hours in your calendar every single morning to focus on actually getting work done before the meeting avalanche hits you. Or maybe you ask your supervisor or your manager or even members of your team to help you prioritize what really needs to be done so you're not having to work on the weekends on work that just isn't important. But here's the thing, you don't have to do all three of these actionable steps at once. You can try each one, one at a time. This is a sustainable transition that can take a few weeks, but the point is it's sustainable. Let's try another example. Let's say you get some feedback from your doctor about your health and you have to make some changes. So you leave the doctor's office, drive straight to Whole Foods, spend $200 on fruits and vegetables, start eating salads and taking supplements and exercising twice a day. Is that sustainable? All of that change at once? No, not so much. For one, you don't have the time built into your schedule yet to accommodate all of those new life changes. Chopping vegetables actually takes some time, y'all. And because you don't have this time already built in to support all of those changes, you feel like you're messing up at work and at home when you don't have enough time to do all the things you wanna do. And for two, those massive changes aren't sustainable. Instead of trying to change 15 things in your life all at once and then crashing and burning when you can't stick with all of them, why not try making just one change instead? Breaking things down this way helps you feel less overwhelmed, yes, but there's a lot less to lose or mess up on because the risk is low, meaning there's less pressure on you to get it right the first time. But even if you don't get it right the first time, that's okay too, try, try again. Essentially, you're building smaller habits up and setting boundaries that help you stick to your goals. By taking one small step, you also leave room to be a human. Because let's be real, things happen and I don't want you to be discouraged when your massive changes don't automatically and easily stick in week one. Plus, there are still errands to run and laundry to do and meals to cook and bills to pay in the meantime. There's real life that still has to happen outside of your goals. Focus on what you can change now in smaller bites rather than trying to change your whole life overnight. By the way, my upcoming program, Next Level Life, will show you how to do just that. Stay tuned for more info. Another important step in making changes that stick, pinpoint the obstacles that might pop up along the way. Back to that example of trying not to work weekends you might be coming up on a true busy season at work. A busy season that's required you to work weekends in the past. I'm looking at you CPAs during tax season and realtors once the weather gets nice and everybody is ready to buy and sell their home. Knowing and accepting ahead of time that you might have to work a weekend will make you feel less frustrated when it happens because you've set the expectation with yourself and because it's something that's happening outside of your control. Another thing that could get in your way would be a team member that doesn't respect the deep work time that you've carved out for yourself. And you might have to have a conversation with them about your goals and how that deep work time impacts the greater good of the team. And in the example of the person trying to improve their health, maybe they forgot that they have a two week vacation coming up and they probably won't be able to stick to their strict diet or exercise regimen while they're cruising the Caribbean. The whole idea is to think about what might pop up or interfere with your progress ahead of time and address it or brainstorm potential solutions before it becomes a problem. Do you want my help? Figuring out how to take those small steps toward your self-improvement, time management, and productivity goals? Do you wanna identify the roadblocks that are standing in the way of your progress? I'm here to be your guide, and I want to invite you to One Step Closer, how to make time management work for you on April 25th. Oh, and if you're watching this after April 25th, 2023, 
have no fear, you can still join in on the fun too. I'll pop a link to the replay down in the description below. One Step Closer is a free live workshop designed to help you find a way to plan your days that works for you, that works the way you do, and to develop time management habits that stick, including feeling less pressure and less overwhelm. I know you've got a lot going on, so I've got four different workshop times for you to choose from on April 25th so you can find the time that works best for you. And if you can't make it live, I know how life throws us curveballs and things can come up. I'll send a replay straight to your email. I really hope to see you there. I'm also sharing resources and tools that can help you with your goals and you'll walk away with a day-to-day -day plan to keep you accountable. As always, Thanks for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my next video. It's coming next week. I'll see you there.